The Taiwanese index, that one is seeing a big cut right now, down 3.5%. But the Hang Seng, it is managing to be in the green. The company has bounced back to growth. How uh, will Mankind Pharma fund this deal? You know, I call this the continued unwinding of consensus trades. So we have gained market share in LCB by about 1.1%. Okay, 30 points higher on the Nifty. So that's a start for you. I think if anything, at best, the market drifts, drifts lower and consolidates. Is there any consideration at all at this point in time to look at a possible review uh, as far as indexation is concerned? A revenue of 2,000 to 2,400 crores could be a possibility on FI 25, 26. The march higher on the Nifty continues. We've crossed 24,600. Liquidity coverage rule is banks have to make an assessment that over the next 30 days, how much money will be withdrawn. They're raising the question of double taxation. The Nifty up almost 400 points right now. Well, that is the day so far. And, uh, you know, it's essentially a terrific, terrific day once again. What a way to wrap up the week uh, this Friday. Once again, uh, you know, it was not as if the global markets were looking good. If anything, they were actually a little lower last night. It's not as if Asia is going gangbusters or Europe is doing very well, but the market here is up 1.5%. We're coming to you from the CNBC TV 18 Moti Roswell Studios. This is the last hour on Closing Bell. I'm Prashant with me, my colleagues Reema, Surubi and Nigel from the newsroom floor. Guys, hi, good afternoon. Hi, Hi, afternoon. afternoon. And look at the way the large caps have caught up in the second half of the trading session. Yep. The first half, it was all about, you know, the mid caps outperforming. And now both the Nifty and the mid caps are up uh, about 1.5, 1.7%. You know, I'll use the term that I use in trading hour. Invincible. It's almost as if this market wants you to believe that it is invincible. Throw tax hikes at it, throw wobbly global markets, throw a NASDAQ sell-off, throw whatever you want. But it's marching away. And guys, uh, I mean, the day's high is 24,818. 35 points away from a fresh all-time high in what has been such a big week. Nigel. Well, that's right. You know, it's like that fast puller coming in running, you know, bowling those <laughs> yorkers, bowling those short pitch deliveries and the batsmen is just smacking him to all ends of Hitting the park. it out of the park. <laughs> all ends of the park. You know, anything you throw at the market. So that's the kind of resilience you're seeing. And it appears the batsman, which is nifty, is in perfect form. It just needs some kind of support from the other end, which is the nifty bank. That guy gets into his own as well. We'll be up and running. And maybe, in fact, we'll put on even more weight from here on. Uh, that's a great analogy, uh, Nigel. You know, the ball for the batsman is looking like a football, right? I mean, it's not like a cricket ball. It's like a football. So, <laughs> whacking it out of the park uh, yeah. all over. Well, uh, that's essentially what is going on, right? And uh, I think uh, it's, it's just incredible. What can one say? Uh, institutional investor after institutional investor that we speak with here on the channel, they all say... Uh, that, well, you know, money is coming in, but we are short of ideas. And that is the reality. You speak to, uh, uh, you know, people all across the institutional spectrum and they all say it's it's very, very hard to come up with ideas, if, you know, uh, and, and uh, yet you have uh, what you have on your screen. So market India continues to outperform global markets. That is absolutely the point number one. It's a big one and a half percent move. It's not a small move by any yardstick. Uh, and I counted four sectoral indices which are up over 2%. So, you know, in the morning as it started, it was IT. But then now there is FMCG, there is, I think, autos, healthcare. So, four sectoral indices. And I think a fifth one is joining in as well with gains of about 2% or more. Mid caps and small caps, small caps are, I think, uh, you know, up about 1%. Mid cap index is up nearly 2%. So, very vibrant screen out there as well. Well, uh, the week-to-day tally stands at 1% now for the Nifty. And for the mid-cap index, it stands at 3.2%. And some of the big winners, Sriram Finance Post Numbers, we'll talk more about it, 10% gain. Look at the way the stock is uh, reacting to that. Pharma's come back, so Divi's Laboratory, Apollo Hospitals, uh, catch your attention with a near 5% gain. Uh, IT is coming for buying, so Wipro's higher. Even Tech Mahindra, which was under pressure at the beginning of the trading session, is now back in the green. So IT, metals, all these sectors have come in for buying. And then not to forget, you know, mid-cap action like a Paytm, for instance. Yeah, that's, up no, that's obviously news-driven. We'll news talk driven. about that because of this uh, license that they seem to have gotten. Uh, but yeah, Sriram Finance's move is absolutely breathtaking. I mean, 10%. Paytm, of course, on circuit because of reasons. Uh, but even beyond in the mid-cap market, look at names. Ashok Leyland was a very sort of quiet reaction to the numbers when numbers came in earlier in the week. But now there's flair, there's excitement, 6% up on that stock. Look at something like Amara Raja, 7 8% higher. Vesuvius is reacting to numbers. Uh, Network 18, of course, the uh, usual caveat supply. It's the company that's operating and owning the channel that you're watching. Just a sense of the kind of excitement in the mid-cap market that's uh, very, very evident. SJVN on that uh, big order win that they announced. Lots and lots of names uh, on the 
uh, upside today. And insurance obviously has been probably uh, the biggest sector and among the best sectors of the week. And all kinds of insurance names are uh, still very much flying around. GIC, even the reinsurer, re is up 15% as we speak. So, Nigel, it's just up, up and away. Well, you know, it's that sort of a day when the market wants to look at positives. Uh, look at Ramco Cement, case in point. The stock is up 7.5% from the low point of the day. On another day, you could find plenty of, uh, you know, problems with those numbers. There is a problem because of a uh, higher amount of, co uh, you know, competition in South India as well. You could argue the stock is not weak. But today, the market wants to look at positives, and that's why Ramco is up. Or take a look at the commodity basket, the metal index. You know, that's popped up in trade for the last series. That was one of the biggest losers. The index itself was down 6%. But today you have that index as well that's participating because now the street believes that maybe, in fact, prices have fallen enough. And below this, if they fall, then many smelters, many refiners will not make uh, too much of money. So that explains why, in fact, you know, today we're having market men looking at the positives rather than the negatives explains why we're up 400 points in a single trading session. And by the way, the Nifty Bank is now up close to around 750 points from the low point of the day. So pull up uh, the intraday chart out there. You'll see it went down to around the 50,500 mark, which we have been highlighting for the last few days. And now it's up and about at the high point of the day. Beautiful move on the Nifty Bank. Sachit Anand joins us on the show. Uh, hi, Sachi. Uh, good afternoon. Good to see you in few hours or an hour before we get into the weekend. Your comment first on today's trading session. Would you trail your stop loss? Where do you think the Nifty is going from here? And also on the Nifty Bank. Uh, good afternoon, Nigel. Uh, clearly, I think uh, the level of uh, 24,000 was well defended uh, on the event day. And uh, even yesterday, we saw uh, you know, Nifty... Uh, uh, starting on a very negative note, but eventually uh, the closing was very healthy. Uh, if you look at today's uh, data points, uh, clearly it states that 24,500 uh, is the next uh, immediate support or a higher support that has been established. And on the higher side, uh, uh, with, the, uh, with the Nifty Bank, uh, you know, performing from here, and uh, we we expect that uh, the Nifty would uh, scale uh, easily above that 24,860 mark. Eventually, we see this uh, particular rally getting continued, and uh, for this particular series, uh, the headroom looks open right up to 25,500 as per the options data. So, I think uh, the floor is well set. Uh, the uh, uh, 24,500 uh, base now looks uh, very firm, and uh, that's why we believe that in a day or so, uh, even Nifty Bank could scale back to 51,830, 52,000 kind of a zone where it's uh, 20. Uh, uh, day exponential average is uh, placed. So I think uh, overall uh, it is a very healthy scenario. The momentum looks strong and uh, with mo both IT and the banks uh, leading from the front, uh, you know, I think 24,000 uh, uh, would be seen uh, uh, relatively quicker uh, in the coming weeks itself. Mm. What would your uh, stock recommendations be? What looks attractive? So, uh, two trading ideas, both on the long side. First one is uh, a buy call in uh, Nokri. Uh, InfoH has been, uh, you know, uh, outperforming. Uh, it has been scaling higher with forming a higher to higher bottom sequence. Uh, we have seen a fresh breakout from bullish flag formation. The pattern target is placed somewhere close to around 7480. But from a trading momentum perspective, we may see a swing towards 7360. The stop loss for the trade should be placed at 7140. So disclosure from our end that we have uh, this, uh, right now given this particular trade to our clients as well. And the other stock which is uh, hit my radar is Excite Industries. Now the stock has been forming a base somewhere close to around 550. Uh, if you look at the overall sequence, uh, it has uh, just uh, given a fresh breakout from a falling wedge formation, which is again a reversal signature. So I think uh, the pattern is indicating a target of around 590. So probably we may see a, a quick swing towards uh, the same. The stop loss for the trade should be placed at around 542 and fresh long positions can be considered in Excite Industries as well. Okay. All right. Uh, got that. Thank you very much for those trading calls. Let's kick it off. Then a lot of stocks in focus this afternoon. Let's start first with what else? But Sriram Finance, this stock has gone into another orbit altogether after coming out with the first quarter numbers. So what is it that's the what is it that the street liking so much about the Q1 print? Abhishek is here with the details. Abhishek, uh, what's happening here? 
Uh, well, the asset quality has improved in a seasonally challenging quarter, and that's what's taken uh, you know uh, the stock up in trade today. Net interest margin has softened sequentially, but that's on account of two key portfolios which have declined on a quarter on quarter basis. That is the gold portfolio, which has declined more than two percent quarter on quarter, and personal loans, which have declined by 0.6 percent quarter on quarter. So that's led to a bit of softening on the yield side, and that's impacted the net interest margin. But the improvement in asset quality augurs very well for them. Uh, so take a look at the gross NP ratio is down to 5.39 percent versus 5.45 percent in the previous quarter. The net interest margin has declined on a sequential basis. Net interest margin is at 8.79 percent versus 9.02 percent quarter on quarter. But why or why the net interest margin has improved? So that compares to 8.32 percent in the same quarter last year. In terms of business momentum or disbursals, they are at 37,710 crores, uh, which is up nearly 23.8. 8% YOY and a decline of 4.1% sequentially. Sequentially, it's a seasonal factor. Disbursals to AM ratio that's remained steady at about 23% when compared to 25% in the same quarter last year and about 27% in the previous quarter. AM growth is healthy at 20.8% YOY and about 3.8% sequentially. Sequentially, it's a healthy growth despite the fact that seasonally Q1 is weak. So, in terms of PL, the net interest income is up 20.6% YOY and 0.35% sequentially provisions are down 5.9 percent quarter on quarter part is up 18.2 percent yoy and about 1.8 percent sequentially back to you okay thank you very much uh, for that i remember even q4 was a very strong quarter for uh, Sri Ram finance so this is at least the second consecutive quarter and this year the stock has seen a 42 percent rally Prakash Tiwan is now with us. Prakash, uh, strong growth numbers, 20% jump in AUM, improvement in asset quality. Where does the stock go from here? Good afternoon, Rima. So, you know, to be honest, uh, the, the quality of the uh, book that Sriram runs has always been very nice. So, you know, the fact that NPAs have come down, asset quality is improved, really is not the big trigger. Well, what's important is look at it from a positioning perspective. Ever since it's come into the Nifty, uh, it's, it's you know, in the last 12 months, for instance, it's done about 60%, YTD about 40% plus. So there's a lot of allocation that's coming it, uh, its way in, in terms of, you know, people moving out of the Bajaj finances and, and, and the other, and that's coming in its uh, favor. But I don't think, you know, these numbers are something... Button over there. So, uh, Prakash, allow us, allow us to come in over there. I think there's a bit of a patchy issue with that line. We'll reconnect and we'll come back on Sriram Finance. Let Prakash uh, just come back on that line and log in once again. In the meantime, we've been talking about this market, which is on a bit of a dream run. So, Sriram Finance is obviously leading from the front. It's not the only one. I mean, even on the large cap screen, the disappointment with which, say, a stock like Tech Mahindra started in the morning. I mean, tech has completely turned around. I mean, Tech Mahindra is now positive from a 4% cut to about a half a percent increase. That's the kind of trajectory that the stock has had. Uh, look at some of the other movers and shakers, Divi's, Apollo Hospitals, so some of these names from the healthcare space, uh, Pharma and Healthcare, they've done well today. Uh, there is buying on other IT stocks as well, Wipro, LTI, Mindtree, uh, these are holding up. It's across the board, really. Then you've got uh, something like an ITC contributing quite a bit, 3% of an up move and a massive one, actually. Look at the intraday chart on ITC, a lot of buying in the last half an hour or so, uh, so big moves coming in on these stocks. And uh, Rima, if you start going to the mid-cap screens, then, mm. well, then we could just go on and on listing stocks, right? It's a complete green day. You know, I think one case in point is emphasis. Yeah. You know, this is a company which has seen no growth in Q4. Mm. It's not that the company is committing to very strong They're not. growth. All they said is that, you know, this year we will do better than the industry. Then we asked them, what is the industry likely to grow at? I remember Nigel asking that question. And he said, well, estimates seem to suggest that it will be low to mid-single digits. So here is a company which is going to keep its margin steady within that margin band, grow its stop line by, say, mid-single digits, maybe slightly ahead of that, and the stock is reacting with a 7% kind of an up move. Yeah. Uh, so, so you know. Just like uh, Sriram Finance as well, right? I mean, as Abhishek also explained, the numbers are fine. Asset quality yeah. is marginally improved. It's not like suddenly they've delivered some 30% you know, growth this quarter or unlike or unheard of uh, numbers. 
but perhaps the market's just like you're saying, you know, people really looking for ideas is too much money chasing stocks. Just checking Shriram Finance, this is the fifth consecutive strong quarter for the company. So it's just mm -hmm. the consistency with which it's been reporting strong numbers. I think, fifth uh, consecutive quarter. I think quarter. with Shriram Finance, uh, you know, the stock had sold off also. The high on Shriram Finance is about 3100. Okay. Uh, and uh, it had sold off uh, to whatever 26, 2650. So it basically is just. Catching you know, uh, whatever, it's, it's come, come back up after the earnings. I mean, you know, you made money in something, numbers are good, so buy it back. I mean, I think that is also perhaps possible. Uh, I, I read this, uh, you were talking about emphasis, right? Mm. Uh, I think I read a note uh, which perfectly uh, captured it. Modest earnings, yeah. a decent TCV, which is yeah. uh, the contract value, and optimistic commentary. Yeah. I think that summarizes essentially Summarize. what emphasis has done and uh, the, what the stock is doing. I think we have uh, Prakash uh, with us. Prakash, you were making the point on Sriram Finance. Um, you know, just complete it because we couldn't quite catch what you were saying due to a scratchy audio. Yeah, my, my apologies for the bad connection. But yes, so what I was talking about on Sriram is, uh, Rima, Sriram has always been known for very good quality. The book has never been suspect. Uh, so it's not just the, you know, lowering of NPAs that is kind of getting the street excited. Uh, it's ever since it's moved into the Nifty, there's been some allocations that have come its way. But now, given the consistency of numbers, I'm sure a lot of more money is uh, being allocated to it as compared to the Bajaj Finance and L, uh, you know L and Finance and all of that. So it's it's more of a shift. Uh, so the markets kind of come to recognize that this is a stock that's not overvalued. Two point three times book historic. It's not not really you're not paying top dollar for it. And there's still some valuation comfort. So I think that's that's precisely what's happening. Otherwise, I didn't see anything in the numbers which should get the stocks so excited. But it's more positioning that's working in its favor. Okay, let's uh, do a quick check on Midcap IT. The two numbers that came out today, one is Emphasis, and that's up 6%. And on the way down is Scient under pressure. Now for Emphasis, Q1 numbers were very, very muted. There is nothing to write home. In fact, a miss on the top line as the revenues declined by 0.1%. So flat revenues. But what the street liked are the deal wins. Deal wins were strong. And not just that, even after strong deal wins, the pipeline continues to grow for the company, which means they've managed to replenish the pipeline. And the pipeline is up 17%. And it's also large deal wins. The company won three large deal wins, of which one of them is $100 million. And also now companies are able to, you know, categorize AI or gen AI related impacts. So emphasis said one third of their pipeline is gen AI related. Remember, even TCS talks about their AI pipeline, not just gen AI, but the AI pipeline. And now you've got emphasis talking about it. The company said they will deliver industry growth uh, above industry growth average in FI25. They're maintaining their margin guidance at 14.6 to 16%. They're confident that they will at least maintain, if not expand margins from current levels of 15%. And their diversification strategy into different geographies going beyond BFS, going beyond the top clients, is bearing fruit. On the other hand, Scient is under severe pressure. And it's uh, still down close to about 5 to 6%. Big, big decline in the company's revenues. You know, the key segment we track has seen a revenue fall of 5%. The company's lowered its full-year guidance. Now they're saying this DET segment, which is the main core business, is going to be flat revenue growth in FI25. And that also analysts are skeptical because they're saying if the company has to even achieve flat revenue growth this year in FI25, they will have to do a 3% revenue growth in Q2, Q3, Q4, which is aggressive or it appears to be you know, a tall task for the company. The only thing which works for science favor, in science favor, according to brokerages, is the valuation. So according to Nuvama, cheap valuations limit the downside, and even Kotak had a buy call just purely on account of valuation. So the downside is protected, but clearly there is no growth coming in for science. Okay, that's uh, a view on some of the mid-cap IT earnings that we've uh, seen. Uh, Prakash, come in on this. Now that we've heard from uh, almost all, and it's very clear that it's not uniform across the board. The larger guys, I mean, TCS Infos Infosys, they're definitely doing well, and they seem to be getting back on track. Wipro's recoveries, there's still a debate around it. Likewise for Tech Mahindra. Uh, and then you have the mid-cap plays. What is your top IT pick? If at all, you'll allocate fresh money to IT now. So it's getting, you know, quite difficult to put fresh money to work on IT because uh, you missed out on the catch-up rally, which uh, is evident. But of course, some of the mid-cap names, uh, the way they've started performing, whether it's persistent, whether it's KPIT, emphasis now, it tells you that some of these players, and I mentioned this uh, when, the, when the earnings season started, 
and all of them have their niche uh, which they're focusing on and trying to grow uh, with it. So if that continues, you'll probably see another 10, 15 percent there. But one of the stocks that hasn't done much and and has immense potential from a DNA and uh, the business model perspective is Tata Tech. Uh, you know, ever since it got listed, it, there was a lot of hype. Of course, the market was like that. It's corrected a bit, softened in terms of valuation. But I think Tata Technologies is something which could surprise the street uh, once some of its projects starts kind of, you know, getting into that uh, uh, commercial phase. So there's lots out there in terms of work in progress. You'll have to wait for it to this. But the management sounded confident last quarter. I'm sure the numbers will start capturing some of the sales. So look at that. It's it's quite reasonably priced. You have a fairly decent risk reward from that respect. All right. Uh, well, take a look at IDBI Bank flying away. That stock was in the red. Uh, the street is hoping that maybe that divestment will finally take place. So that explains why the stock has moved to the high point of the day. As we speak in today's chart, tells you the picture out there. Prakash, I want to quickly ask you about Vedanta. You know, Mr. Agarwal, a few months ago, in September, I recall, people were fearing whether or not you know, there's going to be a default. Now, suddenly, he's gone ahead and raised more than a billion dollars from the market itself. And the bankers, actually, they would like to do business with him. Look at the balance sheet right now. Today, they have a dividend uh, payout, you know, and that's why I think the stock is quite excited as well. Though we did see some selling, maybe by the hedges who were there in that QIP. What's your view at around 445? The stock looks fairly okay in terms of valuations. They have triggers, divestment of the steel asset and various other triggers on the aluminum business as well. Your yeah. take at 445. So I would be a bit cautious, uh, Nigel. Again, as I said, you know, we've discussed this uh, quite often. And, and when it was in that 385 zones, uh, there very clearly was an upside because of the you know global commodity move that was underway. Of course, that's taken a pause. We've seen most uh, metals kind of, you know, making some uh, uh, multi-month lows in, in that sense. But where, where Vedanta will score is if the balance sheet, the way it's getting shaped up to be stronger and the divestment program is fairly... Uh, short in terms of you know the timelines that they come up with, then you have at least their ability to be able to invest in the right kind of businesses which are growing. So when that happens, you could probably relook at it. But right now, if you really ask me, you probably are not. Uh, uh, there's not too much of headroom beyond here, uh, it, you know, and and it will go through a time correction or a consolidation after this dividend. So let's wait for that. But yes, uh, definitely something you need to look at given the change in the balance sheet in the last 18 months. It's dramatic. So the the impact could also be long-term and long-range, and not just just sputter out in the short. Okay, uh, Prakash, we need to slip into a very short break. On the other side, we'll also invite Aman Chauhan from Abacus Asset Manager. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. Uh, you're with us on Closing Bell and the market continues to move from strength to strength. By the way, we are already back to the highs of the day and we are ba barely, I mean, 30 odd points away from fresh all-time highs. Let's see, I don't know if it happens today or not, I mean, for all practical purposes, we're, we're uh, almost there. Now, this week really belongs, not just this week, perhaps even this month, belongs to life insurance stocks. Uh, these are stocks that have gained anywhere between 10 to 15 percent uh, and 16 to 23 percent if you're looking at the monthly tally. Uh, so what are the reasons? Well, for some, we've seen uh, good results. Is there anything else that's powering this kind of a move? Let's bring in Yash to understand what's going on here. Yash, quite a week for insurers. Well, it's going to be quite a week for life insurance companies and the month has uh, also not been any less impressive for all these companies across board. And the big question that leaves us, uh, you know, the entire move leaves us with is that can this year belong to life insurance stocks? That's the big question that we look out for. The stocks have moved anywhere between 10 to 12 percent in the last one week, about 17 to 23 percent in the previous 30 days. If I just have to look at individual performers, HTFC Life is up 12% this week, 21% this uh, in the last 30 days. ICICI approved 15% and 23% move. Max Financial 12% and 17% move. SPI Life 11%, 23% move. LIC 10%, 22% move. So pretty secular in, in its very nature. Uh, I pointed out five reasons which could have brought about this very, very strong move for life insurance stocks. Uh, the first one is the financial results itself. HDFC Life, ICICI Prudential Life, SPI Life, all three reported their numbers in the previous 30 days. Uh, we still have results which are awaited uh, from LIC as well as Max Financial. But HDFC Life, very, very strong numbers, followed by SBI Life uh, and also ICICI Prudential Life. Look at the numbers. Annualized premium equivalent growing at 23% for HDFC Life, 20% for SBI Life, 34% uh, for ICICI Prudential Life. Retail AP growing anywhere between 21 to 57% for these companies. VNB growing at 18%, 11%, 8% for HDFC Life. SBI Life and ICICI Prudential Life. Margin compression has also been very limited. The strongest in this case has been HDFC Life. Uh, apart from that, expectations of a strong FY25. All three managements have guided for about 20% AP growth. They've said that margins will inch up in this particular year. So that's also fueling the move. Uh, there is no negative news from the budget on insurance taxation. So that was one overhang out of the way. Uh, the market is expecting that there won't be any regulatory intervention from IRDAI also. And also these stocks are trading at a big discount from their last five-year average historical price to embedded value valuation. So that's another valuation support or comfort which these stocks are getting. Hmm. And uh, Yash, I remember you coming to me and saying uh, before the budget that, uh, you know, the fear is there could be something, something negative. Uh, and that last, that one table uh, in terms of that uh, one week change which came, that is essentially this budget week because the uh, day of the budget, I think stocks rallied and after that, I mean, they've continued to, I'm assuming, rally in relief. It's also coincided, as you said, with lots of the uh, numbers, etc. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, sort of pretty instru instructive sort of uh, uh, co compilation of what's happening. Aman Chauhan is with us, fund manager at Abacus Asset Managers. Uh, Aman, good to have you with us here. Good afternoon. Uh, Prashant, this side. You heard the reasons from Yash. I want to add one more uh, reason to it. Potential reason with a question mark. How much of it is, uh, according to you, I mean, could also be sort of the hunt for ideas, new ideas, not new, but, you know, things with not very demanding valuations, large liquid sector, some growth uh, sort of in the, in the, on the horizon. How much of it is that, according to you, Aman? Part of it is true because the sector had underperformed and in a bull market, it's always a relative valuation as well as people keep on hunting for new sectors, new ideas. There's always a rotation. One week a certain sector does well, next week we need a new sector to move in. Uh, it happened with IT. I believe it is also happening with life insurance. But it's not just that. Uh, even the business is picking up the fear of something coming in the budget is now behind us. And hence, uh, incremental liquidity is moving towards this sector, which anyway is a decent secular sector to bank on, which is benefiting from the macro tailwinds as such. So are you overweight on uh, insurance companies? If yes, do you want to throw some more color on which one to hunt after the kind of up move? So we have an insurance exposure in our portfolio. It's not a recent one. We have it since years now. And uh, we would have, a say, 
mid single digit exposure to insurance and maybe at a appropriate time mind we might look to increase that exposure but for now uh, we have one of the you can say top five large insurance companies in our portfolio um, Aman, hi, great to have you on. I mean, uh, just again, another point of conjuncture. What seems to be happening with banks, at least from some quarters, the inputs that we gather, and some of them are actually, you know, perhaps uh, foreign desks, there's some rotation away from banks because one section of the market feels that this whole banking issue will take some time to sort out. The fight for deposits, margins, a lot of regulatory overhang from the RBI. So perhaps it's some of that money shifting, looking for newer homes and insurance, like Prashant said, perhaps being a uh, relative value home. Just give us your thoughts on that, whether that could be a possibility and your own stance, because in the past, I remember, you've been quite constructive on large banks, uh, particularly the private sector ones, right? Right. So we continue like the banking space, but incrementally what is happening is post the current quarter numbers. Whatever we have seen is that uh, looks like we are uh, near to the best of the credit costs. So, so NPS can inch up from you, both for the private as well as the PSU banks. And that is something with the street, at least in the near term, is not very excited about. Uh, we also are uh, very constructive on the non fund financial. So that is where also we have exposure. So we have insurance companies, as we have, I just mentioned, and we have wealth companies, we have broking companies, we have AMC in our portfolio. So it's an equal balance for us, financials as well as non financial within the BFSA basket. And uh, as we speak uh, incrementally, uh, the, uh, we feel the non-fund-based financials can do better than banks. Mm. Hi, Aman. Good afternoon. Good to see you. When you know one uh, positive besides the fiscal prudence that the finance minister spoke about in the budget was the capital allocation. No tinkering out there. You know, hold, held it at around 11 lakh crore, which was read positively. You have mentioned in the past that you're like EPC, you're like some of these infra names as well. Uh, are you still positive out there, even from current levels? Because some of them have already seen a big re-rating. Some of them have, but there's enough scope for them to move up further because of the way uh, civil infrastructure is being set up in the country. I believe uh, they have enough of scope for these companies to continue to grow. So right now, most of these companies are projecting to grow anywhere between 20 to 30 percent, and this can continue for the next few years. And for a 20, 30 percent CAGA growth company. Um, these companies are trading somewhere close to 15 to 18 times multiple. They can easily relate to around 20, 22 times multiple. So uh, we continue to remain positive uh, on this space, both EPC as well as companies in the infra space. Uh, I got that. Uh, and what other pockets? Telecom is doing very well, Indus, Idea, all these names. That's uh, is a theme. Do you like it? And any other pockets? Uh, which which uh, which which you think will do well, where there is still relative valuation, because I guess it's about uh, a lot of it is about that now. The telecom also we like, but we are restricted to the top uh, name in the telecom space in our portfolio. Besides that, incrementally uh, we are getting more positive on the pharma and the chemical space. We see things bottoming out there, and incrementally margins can surprise on the upside, and with. Like in life insurance, even these sectors have not been great performers in the past few quarters, and there can be a good catch-up rally in this segment also. So these are the two other segments uh, which we are incrementally more positive today than say what we were six months back. You, Aman, can you elaborate on that? Because chemicals is a vast, vast space, right? Uh, so I know you can't talk stocks, but just incrementally, where do you see the cycle bottoming out and maybe finally turning up within chemicals? Uh, bulk chemicals are looking good. Uh, the imports that we see from China and from other regions is also down, both because of freight as well as for other reasons. Uh, so that is something that is looking exciting. Any chemical company which is facing competition from China is bound to do well. And companies overall, if you're not importing your raw material from China, because that is going to get more expensive, but uh, uh, even agrochemical companies, for that matter, we are seeing good monsoons being so far. Demand should pick up. The inventory issues, which was there in the last season, is not there this season. So that segment also within chemicals is something that is looking exciting to us. So, so I mean, you're saying agrochemicals is looking up. Uh, can you uh, tell us about? Is it going to be like dyes and pigment companies? Is that the area to look at? Fluorochemistry. Uh, you know, specifically, what should one go out and study? Really, as you're saying that the cycle is overall improving. You can look at bulk chemicals, need not necessarily be dyes and chemicals, but some uh, the bulk basic chemicals, soda ash, chloride, that kind of segment that is also now starting to look up. 
Uh, Aman, I remember you were neutral on IT. Is there anything in this quarter's earnings in the commentary which makes you incrementally more bullish? No, we stay neutral. We are not bearish, but uh, not that uh, view has changed post the quarterly numbers. Numbers are in line broadly. Commentary also has been in line. Uh, demand seems to have bottomed out, just waiting for the right time for it to pick up before we get more constructed. So we have some exposure on IT. It will be a single digit in most of the portfolios. Just uh, waiting for absolute demand to pick up before we add on. Have you changed your view on any sector, any theme in the last, say, one month? Any trends that you would like to highlight for our viewers? Uh, not much. It's particularly the same sectors that we like pre-budget. Not, not much of change because of budget per se or anything in the last month or so. Aman, uh, metals, uh, the index is up 3%. Is it, a, is it a global kind of a play here or uh, what's going on in your opinion? Metal is always global. So... Last, uh, say, two weeks, there was some pressure on the metal prices. Seems to be in the near term. That has got arrested and it could be headed up. And hence, we may be you know, having a catch-up rally or maybe a short covering the metal space today. Hmm. I mean, finally, just want to, you know, hmm. get an idea of the mood out there. When you are speaking to clients and many of uh, your investors are obviously HNI, Ultra HNI, and uh, you know, players, what is the sense? This money that's coming in, are they very, uh, you know, happy to write the checks even at these levels or are they holding back? And this money that's coming in now, is it coming in with a three-year view or are people still expecting great gains in the next one year? What's, what's the sentiment with this market frenzy? Broadly, the sentiment remains that people are underinvested. They want to increase the equity exposure just waiting for the right time. And that's the reason we see that uh, even an intraday or a one or two day fall and people come in and lap up the opportunity. So maybe that's one of the reasons why markets are not seeing any deep profit booking per se. So overall, that's the sense we see that uh, people want to increase the equity exposure, just waiting for the right stock, right uh, time to come in. And that's the question people ask us as to so how should we come in? Is SIP the right route? Are we coming upfront or how do we stagger it? So I don't think uh, anybody has a doubt on equity markets per se. Not many are worried on the valuations front. Uh, they have made good money and the sentiment is pretty positive. Post budget and, also uh, a surprise, but sentiment stays positive. Well, with uh, Sipla numbers on the screen, top line slightly shy of estimates, but uh, I think at the EBITDA front and the bottom line level, those numbers have, are above and the stock's doing really well. We'll just get some more analysis going on that. And I mean, I, will, I just wanted to complete the point. So valuations are not a deterrent and clearly neither is tax, right? What's been the chatter this week that you picked up <laughs> within fund managers, within investors? Is anybody bothered? Because 10 became 12 and a half? Or no, life goes on. Life goes on. It's like uh, we have to pay tax only when we make money. So let's focus on making money. Tax will <laughs> go to that. Um, uh, no, absolutely. So you make a little bit more, right? And pay that extra <laughs> time. <laughs> That's the, uh, at least, I mean, you know, the, the color. Uh, so yeah, you're absolutely right. That's what we picked up as well. Not really uh, bothered. Uh, I mean, a little unhappiness at the margin, obviously, but uh, no one is really taking this as a negative cue in that sense. Thanks very much, Aman. Great speaking with you. Sorry, you want to add something? No, that's it. Okay, all right. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's great speaking with you. Have a good weekend, and we'll speak again. Thank you. 400 <laughs> points, by the way, on the Nifty. We are uh, sort of cruising uh, along. Uh, 24,821 is where the index is at. So the high was 24,854. Uh, so, just still about 30 odd point distance uh, between where uh, the high was and where we are now. Sipla has moved up, I think, to the high point of the day. It'll, I mean, the stock will come up on your screen. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's a sharp spike on Sipla, as you can see. Uh, margins are looking much better. Wow, 25.6. Ekta will join us shortly to run us through and uh, put the numbers in uh, context. Uh, but the poll in terms of margins and uh, what the expectation was came up. And I think there's a 150 odd basis point beat there. Revenues are up about 6%. These are actuals year on year. Uh, EBITDA is up 15% year on year. So those are numbers from CIPLA. Uh, we were sort of complaining about how, uh, at least I was complaining about how numbers till yesterday, uh, there have been m many more misses as compared to beats. Uh, so, but you know, you still have the bulk of the earnings season ahead of us. Uh, will we see a bit of a reversal there and some better numbers? Uh, let's hope so. We'll take a break. We are back with... Uh, uh, you know, D Street Chatter, Nimesh has, of course, been working the phones. He'll tell us what's the buzz, what are the stocks to watch, and, of course, our trading ideas as well. Stay tuned.
Welcome back from strength to strength. The market's holding with solid gains as we speak, and it's that sort of a day where uh, you know, look across the screen and it's a sea of green. Well, Nimesh joins us right now to help us out with dealing room chatter. Nimesh, super duper day. Well, in a super duper day, 400 points and counting on the Nifty. Yeah. Actually, you know, Nigel, today's move has caught everybody by surprise. It caught me also by surprise because, you know, while there was a sense of some bit of buying has resumed, I spoke yesterday as well that there is a basket buying. Even today, there is a basket buying at a leading FI desk from the larger FIs. But it looks like today's more of uh, you know, redeployment of cash from the domestic mutual funds, the amount of cash they were sitting on. Because if you look at today's rally of 400 points, it's all broad based. Mm. It's not a single large, you know, nifty name which is which is pulling the nifty up. It's it's across the board. In fact, Reliance is relatively, so to speak, underperformed. ITC is not part participate big uh, in in today's up moves. It's broad based in in the in the nifty stocks today. Uh, while the uh, mid cap index looks smart, a thousand point rally. But if you look at in the broader context, it's relatively underperformed. So today is purely a large large cap, you know, driven broad based you know, delivery based buying kind of a rally is the sense that I'm picking up. So that's something to 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 look to, uh, to look for. Even the bank Nifty, while it is recovered from the days low, from a flow perspective, I understand there is, there is uh, selling pressure. In fact, there is an MOC sell as well in some select uh, you know bank stocks, both uh, private banks as well as PSO banks. So you might see a bit of reaction in the last 30 minutes in the in the in the banking names, but. In large, largely, uh, today's rally has caught a bit, lot of people by surprise and it's purely delivery-based buying in the broader market stocks. Oh, that's good news then, uh, you know, for the markets to see delivery-based buying. But what about individual stocks? What are you picking up? Well, you know, as I said, there is a lot of buzz in the market. So the first stock is Hindustan Construction, big move in that stock. The volumes are on the larger side. In fact, off late, the stock has seen a bit of attraction as well. And I understand some large H&M investors are quite active buyers in Hindustan, in Hindustan Construction. So that's the first name. The second name is Bharat Forge. While the entire, uh, you know, auto names have done well today, Bharat for stands out purely on back of very strong buy flows. So expect high delivery volumes in that particular name. The third stock is Vedanta. We just saw the announcement of the dividend, uh, dividend as well. But, uh, you know, while the stock isn't buzzing, I remember on Monday you're going to see a MSCI rebal of, uh, of, of, around 100, uh, of around 1 crore shares in Vedanta. And, and that's the reason why that stock is buzzing as well. So the last is the cement. Big move on that stock in the last one minute itself. Uh, from almost from 270 to uh, 370 now, a big, big rally as well. Uh, now, the, uh, now the city is anticipating some further corporate development in industry, and hence a big up move in that name as well. All right, uh, got it. Thank you so much for all the chatter and the buzz today and through the week, and Nimesh. Well, uh, speaking of the buzz, I mean, uh, look at Cipla go 6%. That stock is soaring, I think, on a very, very strong US sales number. 250 million is how much they've done. That is uh, way above the pool that uh, Ekta was telling us about. In fact, she's here with us. Ekta, what a move on Sipla. Excellent uh, set of numbers uh, from coming in from Sipla. You know, the revenue is a single digit growth of around six odd percent year on year. But what this street is looking at squarely is basically the margin performance, which is coming at, I think, uh, around 25 percent. And uh, that compares to around 21 percent last quarter. And the key driver would be the U.S. sales this time around as well. So the U.S. sales have come in at $250 million versus, uh, two, uh, you know, versus around $220 million that they did in the previous quarter. So $250 million, the street wasn't anticipating such a uh, figure to come through so quickly for Cipla. Now, what we need to see is that how much of it is probably attributed by one-off opportunities such as Revlimid Generic and what the base sales for the company would have looked like. Remember, they guided towards margins of around 25%. Obang Vora did guide for margins of around 20%, uh, 25% last quarter and they've delivered and that's the reason why the stock is higher because uh, they did manage to do that despite having regulatory concerns around their Goa facility and uh, you know the uh, uh, stronger than expected US sales is the key driver. So margins, US sales is really what the street is reacting to at this point in time. Thank you very much uh, for that. Let's move on and talk about ICICI Bank. That will be reporting numbers and this week we've had some misses on the banking front whether it's Kotak Mahindra Bank or even Axis Bank. So the test will be what ICICI Bank reports tomorrow. Abhishek joins in with the details. Abhishek. Uh, well, the miss, as you spoke about, was largely on the net interest margin side, given the fact that cost of deposits have increased for lenders. So let's wait and watch how that behaves for uh, you know ICICI Bank. Uh, deposit growth is expected to remain healthy at 17.8% YOI and 3.3% sequentially as per Motilal Oswal estimate. A uh, Loan growth expected to remain in line with industry trend at 15.9% YOI and 35 
पर्सन क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर अगेन मोतीलाल लोसवाल एस्टिमेट नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन कैन डिक्लाइन बायो वाई एंड क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर गिवन द फैक्ट दैट देर इज प्रेशर ऑन कॉस्ट ऑफ फंड्स मॉगन स्टैली एस्टिमेट्स नेट इंटरेस्ट मार्जिन डिक्लाइन ऑफ फोर्टी सिक्स बेसिस पॉइंट्स ऑन अ वाई वाई बेसिस एंड एट बेसिस पॉइंट ऑन अ सिक्वेंशियल बेसिस सिक्वेंशियली क्यू वन इज अ वीको क्वार्टर फॉर ऑल द लेंडर्स सो प्रोविजन कुड राइज ऑन अ सिक्वेंशियल बेसिस मॉगन स्टैली एस्टिमेट्स क्रेडिट कॉस्ट टू राइज बाई फोर्टी फाइव बेसिस पॉइंट वाई वाई एंड अबाउट ट्वेंटी वन बेसिस पॉइंट सिक्वेंशियली असर क्वालिटी कैन सी सीजनल इंपैक्ट सो ग्रॉस एंड पे रेशियो एक्सपेक्टेड टू इंच अपई टेन बेसिस पॉइंट टू टू पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट वर्सेज टू पॉइंट टू परसेंट एज पर मोतीलाल लोसवाल एस्टिमेट मैनेजमेंट गाइडलाइन विद रेस्पेक्ट टू बिजनेस मोमेंटम गोइंग अहेड विल बी सींग क्लोजली आपोज सजेस्ट एन आई ग्रोथ ऑफ सेवन पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट वाई वाई एंड अ प्रॉफिट ग्रोथ ऑफ नाइन एंड हाफ परसेंट ऑन अ वाई वाई बेसिस बैक टू यू और अभिषेक थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर दैट यू नो वील टेक अ क्विक कमर्शियल ब्रेक हेयर देर इज बॉट थर्टी मिनट्स टू गो फॉर द मार्केट क्लोजिंग uh we're going to take a break we are uh, coming back in just a bit uh, with himang jani and we continue the market conversation take that forward stay with us Welcome back now. Uh well, the world is all gearing up to the Olympics, which is a once in four year spectacle. Uh it kicks off today in Paris with an opening ceremony and the city is wearing a festive look to welcome athletes from all over the world. From India, a total of 117 Indians are participating in the games and the goal will be to better the tally of seven medals from 4 years ago. Sorry, 3 years ago at the Tokyo Olympics. Sanjay Suri now gets us up to speed on this. Sanjay. The Paris Olympics open later this evening, but just what we will see through that long awaited opening ceremony is the big secret. We do know that it'll all principally be on and around boats sailing down the River Seine, but of course there will be more to it than that it just won't be about boats passing by cheered by hundreds of thousands along the banks with the athletes on board waving back some of what the rest will include has sprinkled through and we know there will be 
artists performing on the banks of the river and on islands in the river, as many as about 3,000 of them, but exactly who, what, where is that closely guarded secret? Among them, certainly some star performers who we will recognize. We've been told there'll be 94 boats uh, carrying about 7,000 athletes down the river, but then 206 countries are participating. So will some boats carry athletes from more than one country? And how many boats then will the Americans need? Uh, they are coming with 592 athletes. India has 117, so that makes for a, a reasonable sort of boatload. But what about the smallest countries? Will some of those get a canoe? The official word from Paris is wait and see for yourselves because none of the sparse information on the ceremony that we have may necessarily be the last word. The key word certainly is surprise and the organizers are keeping it that way. Okay, all right, uh, Sanjay with the report that that surprise is going to be, I think, revealed shortly as the ceremony kicks off and, of course, uh, you know, the, the big, big celebration of uh, you know, world sport really starts off in Paris later this evening. Looking forward to that. I'm sure all of us are. Okay, let's welcome our next guest on the show. We have Hemang Jani joining in. Hemang, I don't know if you are going to follow the Olympics or not, but the market is sort of doing its own athletic jig, right? It's pole vaulting away to newer highs. In fact, we almost hit fresh all-time highs today as well. Budget has come and gone. The bulls are still charging. What are you buying? Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, so uh, today's move is uh, you know, a big surprise. Uh, you know, after seeing the kind of volatility in the global markets and budget not being so great in terms of at least the headline, uh, you know, per se, uh, because of the way they have managed the entire capital gains and you know, stock market related uh, announcements so despite that to see this kind of a move is is definitely a bit of a surprise but i think uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, the liquidity flow is good and i think uh, people are probably hoping for uh, you know rate cut very soon and which is what is reflecting in the way the markets are moving so I think uh, it would be good to kind of uh, look out for uh, these sectors or themes where you still have earning visibility rather than just chasing the momentum. So we are pretty much uh, trying to do that. So you're comfortable buying at these levels. Are you putting money to work and wanted to get your thoughts in on Paytm where they've got the approval, the government's approval for the FDI proposal for the payment aggregator business. Can you explain what this means for Paytm? So, Rima, I think uh, Paytm, uh, you know, on and off, we do get, uh, you know, some uh, uh, news or updates about either somebody trying to acquire them or, uh, you know, uh, RBI giving them some relaxation. So, this, uh, you know, uh, if there is an approval for the uh, uh, payment aggregator business from FPI, it clearly means that uh, the way they are currently managing with uh, multiple uh, banks, uh, you know, there is going to be some sort of a clarity on what kind of business they can do on their own without them having to tie up with multiple small finance banks. And surely if so approval comes by, then it may pave the way for a bigger, uh, you know, uh, m and related move. So uh, maybe that is why you're seeing a bit of an action. Uh, we think that's a high data play because, uh, you know, regulatory approvals, uh, you know, it could be very difficult to tie so if somebody has a, uh, you know, risk appetite, maybe one can really go for it given the kind of, uh, you know, weakness that we have seen. Uh, but, uh, you know, timing is something that is uh, very difficult to gauge at this point. Mm. I mean, it's also been uh, accumulated by some uh, super HNIs uh, uh, over the last uh, two months or so. Uh, so, I mean, at about that 450 odd levels. Uh, now, of course, uh, coming up to about 510. I mean, of course, uh, the bet is that uh, the ship will be you know, uh, it, it'll be back on track uh, in in a different shape and form, uh, but uh, it'll be it'll be much better. That's of course the bet uh, that many are making out there. Insurance, uh, Himang, I believe you have a view because that's clearly the sector of the week. Yash was telling us earlier as well. Uh, but you know, it's life insurers, but it's also the government insurers, GIC and uh, New India Assurance. Uh, your thoughts? Prashant, I think, uh, you know, this has been a sector which has remained a laggard for an extended period of time and you're seeing a bit of a 
revival when it comes to the uh, you know ape or uh, you know most of the other parameters and typically you do see a bit of a rotation between the uh, you know nbfc banks and insurance at some point of time so i believe that uh, both these factors are at play uh, and you might see a bit of a catch up when it comes to insurance we've been liking uh, you know hdfc life uh, sbi life and when we are talking about the smaller psu general insurance companies uh, you do see very large move occasionally so there is nothing material which has happened in terms of news flow but i think it's just a kind of uh, you know momentum play that some people are trying to you know participate in okay um hemang uh, on the mid cap side we've seen so many earnings uh, throughout the week right uh, large earnings as well Ashok Leyland, Memphis, lots of mid-cap IT names as well. Anything that stood out for you uh, anywhere where you have been pleasantly surprised and you know enough to perhaps even merit a buy? Emphasis is something uh, that uh, we feel the numbers were pretty good. Some of the auto ancillary companies, uh, the numbers have been uh, pretty good. Uh, you know, uh, when you look at uh, you know Mother Sun. Uh, and and few others. Uh, so clearly, uh, that's been an area where you're seeing a good amount of uh, action. BBL, Varun Beverages, the numbers have been uh, pretty solid. Uh, so I think uh, some of uh, these pockets, uh, clearly the numbers have been good. But I think that pharma, uh, you know, the action that you're seeing is not necessarily relating to the quarterly numbers, which have been good. But I think people are hoping either some policy change in US and the pricing scenario, which is getting better. So there is a slightly more focus towards uh, pharma at this point of time. Uh, what about Ashok Leyland? Came out with numbers yesterday. Numbers were okay, but the commentary was strong. They spoke about how volumes are back to the levels that they were in Q1 of F519 five years back. CV volumes are at a high. And the stock has seen some follow-on buying, 6% gain. Thoughts on Ashok Leyland? I think there is a you know a lot of catch up at play because for a almost about three to four months uh, the stock actually underperformed post numbers and post management uh, con call uh, there is a sense that uh, the overall volume growth uh, next two quarters uh, is going to be very good on the EV front they have made some interesting announcements so I think uh, you know a combination of this is. Uh, playing out when it comes to Ashok Leyland. I would not be very comfortable buying into it at this level now that it has already gone up to almost about, you know, uh, uh, 250 odd levels. So would avoid buying fresh at this point of time. Okay, got that. Hemang, we will uh, leave the conversation there today. Thanks so much for joining in. You have a good evening and a good weekend and we'll connect again soon. Let's start wrapping out what has been a bazooka of a week for the market. It has taken so much thrown at it and it has emerged victorious. That index is uh, practically at all-time highs. 8550, 54 is the all-time high, 53, 54. There you go, we are closing at fresh all-time highs on the Nifty. It is a bull charge and it is the bulls in control all the way. Even though we are sort of closing down, maybe we can get those uh, all-time high banners, the streamers up, because it is a fresh all-time high. 24,860, in fact, has been hit. What a week for the market. Massive, massive surge today. 450-point rally. And the mid-caps have also been not far behind. 2% up on mid-caps. But it is the large-cap story, the large-cap catch-up that we'll start off with. Key movers and shakers. Sriram Finance on earnings, 9.5% up. Sipla on earnings, 6% higher. Divi's Laboratories, 5.5% up. Bharti Airtel, 4% higher. Then you have quite a few of the, techno uh, the technology names like uh, Wipro, LTI Mindtree, HCL Tech, uh, Infosys, all of these stocks anywhere between 3 and 4% uh, on the tech side, really more than making up for the fact that banks have been sluggish. Even for the, that matter, banks also cut their losses. The way we started the day and the way we are ending it is fairly different. Access at least has flattened out. HDFC Bank has also flattened out. Uh, let's talk about more contributors. In fact, ICICI Bank was better than the others, 1.5% up. There's SBI, which is uh, up in about 1.5% higher. And of course, Reliance played its part as well. You know what? Actually, on the Nifty, there are only two stocks worth mentioning on the negative side. Only three red ticks out of them. ONGC and Tata Consumer are down by about a percent. Nestle is flat. It's not even properly down. So it's been such a fantastic Friday for the market. Well, and mid-caps are not left behind in the entire party. The mid-cap index ending with a gain of more than 1,000 and 1,000 points, and for the week, it's up 3.5%.
And if you thought that, you know, oh, you know, mid-cap, small caps are overvalued, look at the micro-cap index. The nifty micro-cap 250 is up more than 5% this week. And even the PSUs, indefatigable, the PSC index, CPSC index is up 3.5% for this entire week. Lots of mid-cap action. The new kid on the block, Sandstar, up 21%. Life insurance companies, New India Assurance, GIC up and about, Ashok Leland saw buying, SJVN on the back of that order win of 14,000 crore rupees, uh, rally close to about 4, 4.5% and Vedanta ending higher ahead of that board meeting on uh, dividend. Lots of action, lots of activity. This has been one fantastic week for us, but we're going to take your leave and closing bell. Don't go anywhere. Our Friday special editor's roundtable comes up next.